Hey everyone, it's nostalgia time here on Tragic MTG. We're going to look through an old price guide. This is Inquest number one. I uh, picked this up off of eBay a while back. wanted to go through it just for fun. Inquest was published by Wizard, which was the guide to comics back in the 90s. That's how I know about this. Uh, <clears throat> when I would go to the comic book store, I'd pick up Wizard every month. Um, and then uh, uh, was not aware of this other game that was happening at the, car at the comic stores. Um, there were other magazines, so never really got into uh, Magic until uh, probably a, a year or two after this, probably two years after this, and uh, then I had to end up picking up price guides for that later and going through it and uh, dreaming about all the cards that used to be. So, but this is a good one to look at since it's uh, the f one of the earliest ones. I think Scry Magazine and then maybe the Duelist. Uh, I don't know if it had a price guide or not, but those go back a little further. But let's take a look here. Let's try to win a trip to Gen Con inside here and just reminisce with me so back in the 90s there were a lot of other card games that were trying to capitalize on the success of the first collectible card game apparently rage was one of them so <laughs> i've never seen this one i do enjoy uh taking a look at like some of these old games that have just not stood the the test of time uh there's another one inquisition i've never heard of this one so <clears throat> Heartbreakers Inquisition. So I'm not going to read every little word to you here, but we're just going to take a look through. We've got a Moss Monster here. And the articles would have been amazing at the time. I, you know, uh, when I did have uh, price guides, I would have poured through this and, you know, learn how to play and, and who won the Pro Tour and all that kind of stuff. So, and so the I, I'm well aware of uh, Garib Seamus, the publisher of Wizard Comics, uh, of the, the Wizard Guide to comics and there there he is for this for wizard press garib shamus somewhere in this magazine they're going to make fun of him that was always a running joke in the wizard comic price guide inquisition we got battle lords collectible trading card game never heard of there, there were a lot of these then apparently um i've gone through a couple of them on the channel here um over the years here but there's just so many of them the writing into the editor. This is a thing of the past, man. Like, magazines don't even hardly exist anymore. Um, <clears throat> people used to write into the editor and ask questions like, could I use the Ring of Maru from Magic the Gathering to get the France card from Illuminati to put it into play by casting Eureka? So, yeah, they were coming up with all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. And Sure, but expect a punch to the head from your opponent. We gotta at least read the answer there. Yeah. Um, trying to trying to skirt the rules there. It's time for redemption. The game of redeeming the lost. What in the heck is this? Game with art by Greg Hildebrandt. Uh, I'm not even sure what the name. I guess it's just D redemption is the name of this this card game. That's great. Re revise a new Magic the Gathering set is on the way. The revise set. The revising it's. Revise. So, oh, I wonder if this is alluding to Chronicles, uh, or no, Fourth Edition. It's talking about Fourth Edition. So, way back, like this is so far back in the past. Now, it just seems like a hundred years ago. It was really only like twenty some years ago, right? I'm not gonna try to count. My math is off today. Uh, Ice Age is coming as well, and we get tie in with uh, Dungeons and Dragons over here, just like nowadays. It's great. <clears throat> yeah, these, these are these are a great source of nostalgia for this. You got a whole um, article here about it must be like Vampire the Masquerade, um, just Vampire. It's a game. It's not Jihad. It's just a, it's just about vampires. I'm not sure. Hey, there we go. So Dave's Dugout. Some of these places might still be around. Some of them may not be. They also offer wy Wyvern and Illuminati. And pre-order on Ice Age. It's coming. Get ready for that Ice Age. And uh, there was already a hot like uh, um, secondary market for for a lot of these cards. We're going to see that in the, in the price guide. You guys can skip ahead to the price guide if you want. I'm just looking through here for the for the, the feels here. This was such a cool time. Like So 1995, uh, I graduated from high school. So I was actually kind of busy working. I hadn't actually made enough money to like sink into a hobby. So um, I wasn't here at this point. But at the time, you know, I would have been 
what well okay let me take that back i was way into comic books at the time so i was buying a lot of those so but it, like i would pour over a magazine like this just for all kinds of information there's elijah wood they're casting the dragon lance movie wow that's interesting you got eric stoltz or the dude from la law got to terminator chrome guy and elijah wood so they kind of this was good casting, apparently. Not much longer he was going to be Freda. Oh, wow, this is really interesting. This is some dream 90s casting. Somewhere out there, I'm going to flash a picture of it. There's a Someone did a movie poster of the Magic the Gathering movie uh, with their casting with... Uh, I can't remember it all, but it has Jim Carrey as, uh, as Squee the Goblin and uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Karn, I believe. So you can chuckle because it's up there on the screen right now right so this is the kind of stuff we got up to back in the 90s is dreaming about who would play the movie for this Dungeons and Dragons movie Sean Connery Danny DeVito um what's her face I forget Lauren Holly sure <laughs> been a long time Lance Henriksen good good casting good casting for sure ultimate chaos oh uh, yeah they're gonna figure out what the best game is right there so that's a lot of reading we're gonna scoop on some of these things like rats on cocaine an addicts account of pricing collectible cards I just demonetized this video by saying a drug word sorry guys um, <clears throat> Wow just some info on how like the rarity of cards here we go Let, let's get into the price guide here you know that's what you're here for right the alpha set and of course you got to go straight to there's the black lotus right Art by Christopher Rush, two hundred dollars. It's a zero cast artifact, right? And even tells you what it does, so that's pretty cool. Um, as they had to condense these price guides, I think they probably lost uh, some of that information. You just go straight to like the bangers in the set and uh, and just the prices. So, two hundred bucks for an Alpha Black Lotus, man. Where's that time machine? You know, we all want to go back and get that. Uh, we got uh, you could a dingus egg was eight bucks, right? So the alpha set has always been in demand as a collectible, um, pretty amazingly. And that's like definitely what kind of sets this the this kind of game apart is it's a collectible card game. Like never before has anyone wanted to own an original Monopoly set or whatever. Maybe they do, I don't know, but not nearly to this level. So that's what's really interesting to me about um, this game's the best game in the world. Um, it's far more interesting than poker, um, but there's a, a pretty cool secondary market on it, and um, if you're lucky enough to have obtained some of this stuff, then you got yourself a collection. All the moxes are 150 bucks, so just blanket. Like, there's no like factor in there for which one would be more playable than the next. Um, would an emerald do you better than a pearl? Who knows? Nowadays, it's you know there's a little bit of a spread, but they're all still very much up there in good condition it almost doesn't matter soul ring four bucks for an alpha soul ring and a wooden sphere is a dollar force field was a hundred bucks right so that was that right there tells you that that was a very playable card at this time gauntlet of might where's the shivan dragon <clears throat> there's no shivan dragon in here wow so shivan dragon not a big enough card to because it's been re got reprinted a few times so didn't make the price guide so uh, oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. These are those are all artifacts. Okay, so that's an interesting aspect of this uh, price guide. It breaks it down by color. So here we're into black cards. You got a bad moon's twelve bucks. Demonic horrors twelve bucks. A lich seventy five dollars for a lich. That's pretty cool. Uh, Word of command is seventy five bucks. Let's look into blue ancestral recall one hundred twenty dollars for power nine alpha. Amazing control magic. I, one of my favorite cards, just the just the uh, the art on it, five bucks. You can be yours for five bucks. Man of short nine. Slide of mine. Pirate ship. Time walk one fifty. Time twister, one oh five. A twiddle is eleven dollars. Wow, so that that saw some play back then, and as a common, and uh, it's a is eleven dollar common. That's amazing. Unsummon was even a dollar. So, pretty cool. Well, I mean, that's alpha, right? So, it's just the original. Got green, you got ice storm at 20 bucks. Nothing big and green there, uh, 
Yeah, that's not much. Web is seven bucks. Red, you got Dwarven Demolition Team is ten bucks. That's awesome. Fork is twenty. Uh, I had a friend who used to play a fork. He said that was the best card ever. Raging River, sixty-four dollars. So, was that just super hot? When attacking, divide opponents' ground, ground creatures on either side of Raging River. Attacker then can then choose on which side of river to place each attacking creature. And attacking creatures can only be blocked by flying creatures or those on the same side of river. Wow, sixty-four bucks. That must have been the. I don't know. Did that win a pro tour or something? That was a big, de uh, big card back then. There we go. Sheevan Dragon, twenty-eight bucks. It's classic. I'm going to go back and look at Nightmare because that's one of my favorite cards and it's been reprinted a zillion times. But at the time, yeah, 19 bucks for a night uh, Nightmare. I think it saw a lot of play back then because it's just kind of a classic. And it and it worked. It was a big creature that, well, it was a creature that could become big, right? And it flew. It was kind of hard to deal with back in that era, I imagine. So white, Blaze of Glory, 57 bucks. That's a big standout there. And Northern Paladin. I thought balance was a big card back then. Let me check. <clears throat> Nine bucks for a balance. I guess it's not as big as I thought it was. What do we got here? What else? Veteran bodyguard, 13. Wrath of God is 10. Then your lands. Look at all these lands, right? 12 bucks for alpha dual lands. Awesome. Basic force, 50 cents. Plateau, 14. Underground C, 12. The plateau is more than the underground C. It's awesome. So, beta, okay, so they, they ditched the uh, text for the card. And here it is, just the prices. So, 175 for a beta lotus. Cyclopean tomb, 60 bucks. Gauntlet of might. Let's see, uh, Volcanic Island. Let's find a Volcanic Island because it's not in alpha. Volcanic Island, 10 bucks. There you go. So, really cool to see. Uh, even the, the unlimited black lotus was 150 bucks so <clears throat> the price differences were not that great based on on set because i think for the most part people just wanted to play with it and the demand was high so it caused the price to go high collectability was a little bit secondary still at this point right let's move on into well we got uh revised to look at here and uh <clears throat> everything's right about three four bucks Dollar here, dollar there. Four bucks for a winter orb. Six bucks for a bad moon. Ten fifty for a royal assassin. So that would have been, it must have been doing some work at that point. Uh, Vesuvian doppelganger, eight fifty. Eight bucks for force of nature. Ten for a fork. Fourteen for a Sheevan dragon for a revised. And some lands, six bucks for the uh, for the uh, revised dual lands. Oh man, go back in time, right? Arabian Nights. Let's take a look. I actually got. I keep wanting to get a hold of a Library of Alexandria. <laughs> it's like stuck in my mind, and uh, <clears throat> it's not getting any cheaper. Let's see what it was back then. Pyramids, twenty bucks. Ring of Maruf. 25 guardian beast 50 bucks Jusum gin 40 bucks so even then the ravy knights was rare old man of the sea 32 singing tree 25 these are still the reserve list well the reserve list was not around yet at this point i think these were still the hot cards right and they didn't want to people didn't want them to be reprinted because they had them and they saw the saw it in the price guide it was worth a lot they didn't want their cards to be worthless Jihad, thirty-two fifty, and then the lands. Bizarre Baghdad, fifteen bucks. City of Brass, twenty-five. Diamond Valley, thirty-five. Library of Alexandria, twenty-five bucks. Yep, I got my on a, on a PSA nine and or a BGS nine actually, and they want forty-five hundred dollars for it, and I just can't bring myself to to uh, pull the trigger on it yet. Let me know down below, should I just abandon all of my sanity and buy something like that? And what will I do with it? Just put it in my safe and have it? I don't know. I'm a little torn. Anyway, Antiquities. Candelabra Tanos, 20 bucks. Colossus of Sardia, 20 bucks. Like, 
they played that card back then, I guess, you know? Just like whenever any set comes out, there's hot cards that get played, and then they fall out of standard, they go out of style. Our guy, even an archaeologist. 15 bucks for Gauntlet, Gauntlet of Chaos. For we're into Legends now. 12, 40 bucks for Mirror Universe. I just watched a video with Joseph Gordon Levitt. He played a Mirror Universe card from his old collection, and it turned out pretty good. Serpent Generator, 22 bucks for Serpent Generator. That's crazy. The Abyss, only $20. All Hallows Eve, $25.50. Cool. Fun stuff. Uh, let's look at Mana Drain. Invoke Prejudice, 13 bucks. Can't even be looked at now. The Wretched, 27.50. Where are we at here? We're in uh, Mana Drain, 14 dollars. Not a reserve list. If it, if that card was a reserve list, it would be 1,400 dollars right now, right? <clears throat> Eureka, $20. Quite a bit more now. Multicolored cards. All about five, ten bucks. Nebuchadnezzar at 18. Nickel Bolas, $26.50. So he was popular back then, in fact. Ve Victus Asmati, the, the Elder Dragons are 23 bucks. So red, white. Let's look at the lands real quick. Tabernacle of Pendril Vale, $15. Amazing. Then into the dark. So, for a long time, the dark was just there. It wasn't like a whole lot to it. Uh, even then, you know, five bucks here, dollar fifty there, four, five fifty. What's the big standout from the dark at the time? Six fifty for Nameless Race. Seven bucks. Dance of the Mini. Leviathan is eight fifty. Wow, well, just because it's a giant creature. Cool. Blast from the past. Oh, here we go. Let's get into Fallen Empire. So Preacher was 950. It's still one of the best cards in the dark. City of Shadows was four bucks. The lands are were okay. Fallen Empire is two dollars, one dollar, fifty cents, fifty cents. Yep, this is the this is where it all went downhill. <laughs> yep, nothing much in Fallen Empires even to this day. Was there anything big? Right now, Elvish Farmer, I think, is the biggest card, and it was it's three bucks back then. Lands, three bucks here and there. Miscellaneous. These are uh, like promo cards. There it is. So that was your your price guide from 1995. We can go into the Star Trek: The Next Generation card game and take a look. Wow, a data card is forty bucks. Big big money right there. So. These old card games are kind of interesting to me. We got Illuminati, New World Order, and no prices. Just a checklist, basically. The Inquest checklist for other card games. Wow, Jihad, Blood Wars, On the Edge, Necromutant, Dixie, Spellfire. Spellfire looks good. Oh, it's the the Dungeons and Dragons. I don't even. I never remember seeing that as being like a collectible card game. It didn't seem like there was much of a game to it. Galactic Empire, Star of the Guardian, Super Deck. I might have to check that one out. And Wyvern, I have to check that one out too. <clears throat> Here's where we can go get uh, some cards at. And some ads and stuff. And that's it. Oh, Ice Age is coming soon. The Fire Sings, the Glaciers Call, the Ice Age comes. Big. That was a big expansion at the time. Like, super, they, they sold a ton of it, right? And I know that because I always find a ton of it when I get my random buys. So anyway, Inquest Magazine from Wizard Publishing from 1995, number one. Blast from the past. Thanks for watching if you watched all the way to the end of this or fast forwarded to the end. I thank you anyway. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you later.